you just released your latest album, Easy Cover, this past Friday. Yeah. How has the initial response been so far for this? It's been really good. Ever since we came up with the idea, people have been really, really behind it. Because, like, to be honest, the idea was a bit of a joke about 10 years ago on a really drunken tour bus drive back from Germany. It was like an all night and we just finished a tour and it was a proper all nighter as well. And we were singing along to some 80s rock. <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, I think it was Easy Lover. And, and somebody suggested as a joke that we should release uh, a whole album of 80s songs called Easy Cover. And uh, that was the joke, which was always a joke until lockdown happened. And suddenly I was in the studio, I was supposed to be producing a couple of bands and they couldn't come in. So I just put out an album and so I didn't have any songs. So I just started doing 80s songs, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how it started. But the reaction's been, all the way through has been really good from me mentioning it to my manager in the beginning uh, to playing it to the guys when we first started started demoing it and to the reaction so far on it seems it's streaming way better than our last album did so I'm not sure that says about my songwriting but uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah it's been really good oh great uh, Ben that sort of follows on to my next question to be honest it's um, now this, this album is a mixture of 80s covers and original inspired tracks how much did the 80s inspire you to become the band you are today? Uh, the 80s, I was actually a 90s kid. That is where my love of music came from. I was like, a, you know, Britpop changed my world and made me want to be in a band. Was, yeah. And, uh, but the 80s, I, I was really young in the 80s. So when I hear 80s, I get two sorts of nostalgia from 80s music. One, it reminds me of being a really young kid. And then two, in our 20s, early 20s, we went through this real long phase of going to 80s clubs, like reflexes and things like that. <laughs> uh, mainly because our drummer quite liked older women. That was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and I had some amazing nights out on... Uh, and that I sort of rediscovered. I discovered 80s music during my 20s. And it's kind of like in my... In my teenage years, because of like Oasis, Blur, Suede, so that lot, that turned me on to 60s British music. And then in my 20s, I sort of discovered 80s British music for the first time. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, uh, what is your favourite track of the new album? I, I just realised, guys, I know I'm whispering on. Is this just a really short piece? Do you want me to keep the question short, the answer shorter? um no it's gonna be as long as you like mate okay, right. <laughs> yeah. got, uh, as long as you're all right with that you really realized if it was like, you had like a little you're like oh no fucking hell how am i gonna make this into three lines no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> my my favorite track on the album is uh everybody wants to rule the world i think it was our i think it's the best one on the record which is why we put it at track one and i think it also means the most to me because it's the one that makes me really like when it comes on it just makes me feel like a kid again I, I feel like I'm in my bedroom at home at okay. bedroom growing up uh, and it's also also through a twist of fate it was the last band I saw before lockdown this is very much like a lockdown project and the last band I saw before lockdown was Fears for Fears in Brighton uh, and they were yeah they were absolutely incredible it was such a fun night that's great yeah. nice so, um, 2020 and uh, the beginning of uh, 2021 hasn't exactly gone to plan for many artists across the world. Was there any time you started to lose motivation with lockdown and this uh, pandemic occurring at all? So, um, did you ever like lose motivation at all? Like writing, uh, writing music? I went through every phase, like totally every phase, like because we had we had to pull or move 98 shows last year. I mean, up doing four, of which two were on Zoom. Yeah. And we've already we already discovered how fucking annoying Zoom is. <laughs> <laughs> and another two were to a car park of people, which was weird. And so, 
yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was for live music it was so tough for being in the studio apart from the last lockdown which i think everybody hated uh i actually fell back in love with music totally like i i sort of went back into uh because we had to test the vinyl for this record i had to get my set up reset up i hadn't played vinyl for years and i pulled out some old records and then just completely fell back in love with music i like i started going because i had extra time i was spent a lot of time in the studio but a lot of time reading like classic rock autobiographies and going back and buying all the great albums on vinyl again and then getting massively into vinyl and just collecting it and then into audio and yeah so I actually found it a really really inspiring time for personally for music uh yeah it gives you some time to reflect doesn't it I think yeah totally it gave, it gave me a bit of time to reflect and also you realize how lucky I was to do what I do for a living how much I miss it when I can't do it both yeah. playing and recording other people so yeah it was I actually found it you know both inspiring and incredibly hard yeah that's a good response i think <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um if you could work with um any bands or artists on a new song who would it be and why well obviously phil collins <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, you know, uh i'd love to work with, I'd probably, i would definitely want to have phil collins paul mccartney he's my favourite songwriter of all time, Brian Wilson, the greats, modern day. I'm working with this band at the moment who they, they seem quite pop. They actually won the Little Mix BB. There was a like from Ultimate Rock magazine. I don't website. You probably weren't aware of a Little Mix TV show on last Saturday night on last uh, before Christmas on BBC. I'm working with the band who won that oh. one. I think I do. Uh, my parents watch it, so yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I've seen it on the band who won it. We're actually quite like a rock, kind of a pop rock band, oh, awesome. and so I've been working with them at the moment. So I've been really enjoying that. They're called Since September, and uh, oh, brilliant. We'll start putting stuff out very soon. Oh, awesome! And um, so, awesome twenty twenty one. We'll hopefully see Scout of Girls touring once more. Is there any particular venue you are looking forward to playing in particular? We're doing loads of venues which we've never played before, which for there to be a venue in the UK that we haven't played is a miracle because we've just toured so much. Uh, the ones I'm kind of looking forward to, uh, there are, like there's some real classic ones like the, the Holmfirth Picture Dome, proper old classic, you know old school venues like lincoln engine shed yeah uh, i'm trying to have a look at some of the i think we'll be we'll board. be attending the savanta one engine rooms i bet yeah the engine uh, room would be amazing it's i think that's the road it's a former roller skater uh, skating sort of yeah um, i think it was <laughs> I'm, I'm actually because i love like that sort of history i'm and my aim is because we're doing because this was actually supposed to be a little tour yeah. six months after our first tour in 2019 of places we've never been to before like tiny little like 400 to 800 cap and then as the as the shows moved on as like we kept having to postpone them uh sorry my wife's just come in to <laughs> sorry. Uh, what? okay pardon. i'm just telling you those are for freddy don't eat them okay. Oh, this is rock and roll, boys. Literally, this is rock and roll. Right. The I'm wife came in. Said, in she bought them these. She said, These are for Freddie, not yours. Don't eat them. <laughs> that is rock and roll. But, uh, sure yeah, I'm actually I'm hoping on this tour, because we're going to tour again probably in 2022, just much smaller but bigger places, because it'll be our 15th yeah. anniversary. But like again, some of my favorite places like Shepherd's Bush Empire and uh Rock City. And I'm I want to try and do like a like a travel log stroke like history of music venues in the UK sort of book because we're going to so many places so I'm literally buzzed about going anywhere on this tour anywhere oh, to yeah. get out of the house yeah <laughs> oh, don't blame me. um so one last question um and thank you very much for your time 
Uh, so back back in 2007, you had uh, huge huge success with your self-titled uh, debut release that achieved the UK number one in the album charts. Would you say it's more difficult in today's music industry to achieve that status? I I think it's probably easier to have a number one record now because you could sell a lot less to have a number one record, a number yeah. one album. I think it's much harder to have a number one single. I think it's much harder to have the sort of success that we had where you become like a household name. I think that's like because just because everything is so diversified and niche and, and you know, you can now listen to anything. Whereas back in 2007, you kind of listened to what your, the CDs you had and, uh, and what radio played. Whereas now you just listen to your own playlists on pretty much whatever, wherever you get your streaming from. And so you can go really niche and deep with certain artists, but it's very hard. I think labels are finding this now. And I, I, having managed bands and been involved with young bands myself, it's really hard yeah. to make a band massive again. Uh, really is difficult. It requires huge amounts of like- Lots of competition. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. Shall we say yeah. again? Lots of competition at the moment, like lots of... Um, well, it's just like the point okay, of entry yeah. is so low. Like, something like... I think it's like 40,000 songs being put up on Spotify every day or something ridiculous like that. And anyone with a laptop can write a song, like, literally in a day, can write a song, record it to a decent quality and have it on Spotify. Like, anyone can do it. So you've just got, like, yeah. billions of choice coincide with the fact that not only that, you know, for you know, 12 pounds a month, you can listen to anything you like in the whole world, in the history of music. Plus you can watch like anything you like on TV, pretty much, you know, like, and there's just so much shit to do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, so, yeah. I, I feel like it is, it's really hard, but to be fair, I'm not, uh, for our band, it's been amazing because there are less and less people to take your place, which is why festivals have the same bloody lineup pretty much every year. There's no new, great new bands who can break through at that level to sort of headline a festival. I'm not saying there aren't amazing new bands. They're just like, uh, yeah, no, I know what you're getting at. Yeah. Hard of them to get known and to make a living out of it, which is really shit to be honest. Cause the labels yeah. as well, the labels are making more money now than ever before, but they're just not investing in, you know, bands or at all. Yeah. All right. Well, that leads me, uh, one more thing to say is, um, we say a love song. This is goodbye. <laughs> 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 love that. Love that. Well done, 